Welcome to Bible Stories, the channel where we embark on a captivating journey through the timeless tales and profound narratives found in the scriptures. I'm thrilled to have you join us as we explore the rich tapestry of characters, events, and lessons that have shaped the moral and spiritual landscape throughout history. Today we delve into a fascinating chapter, the last days of King Solomon's life. So grab your metaphorical walking stick and let's traverse the sacred pages together, uncovering the wisdom, challenges, and consequences that defined this iconic biblical figure. Even the wisest of monarchs can encounter obstacles, and Solomon was not exempt from this rule. Behind the grandeur of his wisdom lies a vulnerability that, as it was revealed, brought his reign to the brink of the abyss. Today, we will explore in detail every aspect narrated in the pages of the scriptures, from Solomon's ascent to the throne to his final days. I believe that this meticulous examination deserves your support with a like and a subscription to the channel, contributing to the dissemination of this video, The Last Days of King Solomon. Solomon, the son of King David and Bathsheba, stands out as a notable figure in the biblical scriptures, recognized for his remarkable wisdom, wealth, and pivotal role in the construction of the Temple of Jerusalem. His ascent to the throne of Israel occurred amid challenges and family intrigues after David's death. Adonijah, his son, attempted to seize the throne, but the prophetic intervention of Nathan and Bathsheba ensured that Solomon, God's chosen one, was crowned king. The divine revelation to David recorded in the first book of Chronicles 22 was clear. You have shed much blood and fought many wars. Therefore, you will not build a temple in my honor. However, your son, who will be a man of peace and tranquility, will build the temple in Jerusalem. His name will be Solomon, and I will provide peace and quiet to Israel during his reign. Solomon, whose name is derived from the word Shalom, meaning peace and signifying peaceful, is also called in the Bible by the name Jedidiah, which means beloved by the Lord. The approximately 40-year reign of King Solomon over Israel took place between 971 and 931 BC. The early years of Solomon's life and youth are practically unknown, but based on biblical information about David's family life, it is possible to establish a context for the environment in which Solomon grew up. David, known for his multiple wives, faced numerous family problems, resulting in intrigues among wives and children seeking prestige and power. Solomon emerges in biblical history during a tense period in the royal family. As a struggle for the throne of Israel unfolds, due to the old age and weakness of King David, before this episode, Absalom, Solomon's half-brother, tried to usurp his father's throne, but without success. Later, Adonijah, David's eldest surviving son, also attempted to proclaim himself king over Israel, echoing Absalom's move. Adonijah had the support of Joab, David's former general, and the priest Abiathar. He made numerous attempts to occupy the throne, including organizing a coronation festival. However, upon discovering Adonijah's plan, Bathsheba, the prophet Nathan, the priest Zadok, and other allies worked to remind David of the unfulfilled promise regarding Solomon as his successor. Thus, David issued orders related to Solomon's ascent to the throne, and he was crowned king of Israel, anointed by Zadok. Probably at the time of his coronation, King Solomon was no more than 18 years old. He began his reign by promoting stability and unity in the kingdom, his most striking characteristic which set him apart among the leaders of his time was his extraordinary wisdom. In the early days of his reign, Solomon established a significant covenant with God, revealing not only his wisdom, but also his intention to seek divine guidance in his government. The details of this covenant and its conditions are documented in the first book of Kings 3, 3, 14. 
The crucial event took place in Gibeon, where Solomon offered sacrifices before the Lord. That night, God appeared to Solomon in a dream and said, Ask me what you want, and I will give it to you. Solomon expressed his humility, acknowledging the responsibility of leading the people of Israel. In particular, he mentioned his need for wisdom to judge and rule justly. He recognized his absolute dependence on God to guide his steps and make wise decisions that would benefit the people of Israel. Solomon's choice to ask for wisdom instead of wealth or personal success demonstrated his desire to lead with integrity and justice, reflecting the heart of a wise and God-fearing leader. God's response to Solomon's plea was remarkable. God praised the king's choice and in addition to granting the requested wisdom promised additional blessings, including riches and honor that would be unparalleled in the history of Israel. A famous episode illustrating this wisdom is the one involving two women disputing the maternity of a child. The narrative found in the first book of Kings 3.16.28 describes two women who lived together and gave birth around the same time. However, one of the children died, leading both women to claim the surviving child as their own. Faced with this impasse, the women appeared before King Solomon seeking justice. Instead of making a hasty decision, Solomon proposed an extraordinary solution. He suggested splitting the child in half and giving each woman half. The response of each woman revealed the true mother. The woman who genuinely loved the child pleaded with the king not to harm the child and instead suggested that the child be given to the other woman. The other woman who was not the biological mother, agreed to the proposal of division. Solomon's astute response revealed the true mother, the one willing to give up the child to protect it from harm. So, Solomon declared that the legitimate mother was the one who had shown genuine maternal love. He ordered that the child be given to this mother. In addition to his wisdom, Solomon also stood out for remarkable achievements, including the construction of the Temple of Jerusalem. This grand undertaking not only served as the spiritual epicenter of the kingdom, but also symbolized God's constant presence among the people of Israel. The magnificence of the temple not only reflected Solomon's administrative skill, but also the opulence and prosperity of the kingdom. The desire to build a temple to the Lord was initially conceived by his father, King David. However, it was Solomon who carried out this noble project. The biblical narrative meticulously describes details and precious materials, such as cedar from Lebanon for the structure and pure gold for the adornments used in the construction of the temple. This reflects the king's dedication and reverence towards God. The chosen location for the Temple Mount, Mount Moriah, held deep symbolic significance, being the same place where Abraham demonstrated his faith by being willing to sacrifice his son, Isaac. This act of faith and obedience preceding the Templar's construction emphasized the continuity of the special relationship between God and his people. The Temple of Solomon emerged as the spiritual and cultural epicenter of Israel, becoming a symbol of unity in worship. Additionally, Solomon dedicated himself to building international alliances, solidifying trade and diplomatic relations. A notable example of these external relations was the visit of the Queen of Sheba, who came to test Solomon's wisdom. These events are recorded in the first book of Kings 10.1.13 and in the two book of Chronicles 9.1.12. Upon arriving in Jerusalem, the Queen of Sheba presented challenging questions to Solomon, testing his wisdom. The Bible reports that Solomon answered all her questions and there was nothing he could not explain. The Queen's journey to Jerusalem was marked by an impressive caravan carrying an abundance of spices, gold, and precious stones. The exchange of gifts during the visit highlighted the elevated diplomatic nature of this encounter. In addition to the visit of the Queen of Sheba, Solomon established diplomatic relations with other kingdoms, 
He formed marital alliances with princesses from neighboring nations, such as Egypt and Phoenicia, a common practice at the time to strengthen alliances and promote peace between kingdoms. However, throughout his reign, Solomon was not immune to failures. Despite being acclaimed for his wisdom and grandeur, his story is also marked by mistakes and deviations that eventually had significant consequences on his government and the history of Israel. One of Solomon's major missteps was his involvement with foreign women going against divine instructions. The first book of Kings 11.1.3 recounts that Solomon had many foreign wives, including the daughter of Pharaoh, and took princesses from neighboring nations, disobeying God's law that prohibited marriages with women who worshipped other gods. These marriages were not just political alliances. They also introduced foreign, cultural, and religious influences into Israel. The foreign wives brought with them religious practices that gradually exerted a negative influence on Solomon. He began to tolerate the worship of various idols and participate in rituals that were contrary to the exclusive worship of the God of Israel. The culmination of this deviation was the construction of temples for the idols in honor of the deities of his wives, an act that directly contradicted God's commandments. This apostasy, including the construction of altars, marked the last days of Solomon, as reported in the first book of Kings chapter 11 and 12. In addition to the visit of the Queen of Sheba, Solomon established diplomatic relations with other kingdoms. He formed marital alliances with princesses from neighboring nations such as Egypt and Phoenicia, a common practice at the time to strengthen alliances and promote peace between kingdoms. However, throughout his reign, Solomon was not immune to failures. Despite being acclaimed for his wisdom and grandeur, his story is also marked by mistakes and deviations that eventually had significant consequences on his government and the history of Israel. One of Solomon's major missteps was his involvement with foreign women going against divine instructions. The first book of Kings 11-1-3 recounts that Solomon had many foreign wives including the daughter of Pharaoh, and took princesses from neighboring nations, disobeying God's law that prohibited marriages with women who worshipped other gods. These marriages were not just political alliances. They also introduced foreign cultural and religious influences into Israel. The foreign wives brought with them religious practices that gradually exerted a negative influence on Solomon. He began to tolerate the worship of various idols and participate in rituals that were contrary to the exclusive worship of the God of Israel. The culmination of this deviation was the construction of temples for the idols in honor of the deities of his wives, an act that directly contradicted God's commandments. This apostasy, including the construction of altars, marked the last days of Solomon, as reported in the first book of Kings chapter 11 and 12. This period was characterized by a mix of glory and shadows, revealing the complexities of life and governance. As Solomon's previous choices, especially regarding marriages with foreign women and the acceptance of the worship of foreign idols, began to have a negative impact on his reign, the anger of God manifested, raising adversaries against Solomon. Jeroboam, a trusted official, rebelled against the king and became a prominent leader who would eventually lead the northern tribes. Solomon's death marked the end of an era. He passed away after a reign of 40 years, leaving a legacy that included the majestic construction of the Temple of Jerusalem and a period of unprecedented peace and prosperity. The Bible does not provide specific details about the exact cause of Solomon's death. However, in the first book of Kings, chapter 11, 41-43, it is recorded that the rest of Solomon's story, his actions, and the wisdom he demonstrated are written in the book of the Acts of the Kings of Israel. He rested with his ancestors and was buried in the city of David, his father. His son Rehoboam succeeded him.